Ireland Center here with me today. She's going to walk us through the shoulder exam and hopefully you've all listened to our podcast that has a lot of great information about what to do with these maneuvers, but this should give you a good visual representation of how to take these back to your clinic. All right, so first we're going to walk through and kind of walk through it slowly step by step and then we'll do a quick run through as if we're in clinic seeing a shoulder patient. Um, so starting with inspection. Um, in clinic typically I'd have you in a gown and the gown would be tied off the shoulder so that we could observe the clavicles and the back, the shoulder blades. Um, what I'm looking for in the clavicle exam is any kind of asymmetry like a history of clavicle fracture would give you. And then on the flip side, on the shoulder blades, what I'm looking for is any asymmetry of the shoulder blades like winging. Um, also if you look beneath the scapular spine, um, we can kind of show here where that would be. So the scapular spine um, through here on Molly um, is from here to here. And if she had scalloping out of the muscle here, that would indicate infraspinatus atrophy and a chronic rotator cuff tear. All right, so that's your inspection. And then back to the front, so um, I'll palpate after inspection. And so on palpation, what I'm looking for is any tenderness here of the acromioclavicular joint, which is where the clavicle meets the acromion. You can kind of feel this little divot. And then secondly, here in the front of the shoulder, really feeling for um, the long head of the biceps tendon. And um, that's right where the shoulder meets the chest wall. You can kind of put your thumb across it and feel it roll underneath your thumb. And then sometimes if, um, if I can't feel it just doing that, I'll take the patient's arm and sort of rotate internally and externally, rotating the shoulder and um, feeling for the tendon kind of popping under my finger. So those are the two areas of palpation. I'm looking for pain in both of those cases, so any tenderness of those spots. So we've done inspection and palpation, and the next step would be range of motion, which we talked about a lot mm -hmm. in the podcast. Um, range of motion, I think, is probably the most important thing about the shoulder exam. And so active range of motion I like to do, we'll um, just do it together. So shoulder range of motion is pretty straightforward, so just forward flexion, and then abduction, and external rotation, and then internal rotation up behind the back, comparing side to side. And if you like, you can document, you know, what level of the uh, thoracic spine, you know, the index finger matches up to. If her active range of motion were abnormal, so let's say she has a right frozen shoulder and she can barely forward flex and she can barely abduct, I'd want to do passive range of motion. And so I would take her relaxed arm in my hands and bring it into abduction and then external rotation and then internal rotation. And the reason I'm only bringing the shoulder into 90 degrees of abduction is because the glenohumeral joint controls abduction from 0 to 90, and the rest of our abduction is controlled actually by the, thoracic, the um, scapula thoracic joint. And so the motion of the scapula on the thorax allows us to reach way overhead, whereas the motion of the glenohumeral joint allows us to abduct from 0 to 90. If she had a frozen shoulder, then her passive range of motion might look more like this. Just very, very stiff. Alright, so we've done inspection, palpation, range of motion, and next we'll do some special testing. So the first kind of special testing we'll do is strength. Mm -hmm. And we'll test the strength first of the rotator cuff. So um, we talked about in the podcast the importance of identifying full thickness rotator cuff tears and referring those to surgeons, and we talked about a few maneuvers to look for a full thickness cuff tear. Um, so one of those is the um, drop arm test, and you really already did that. We did that with abduction. And so if you observe your patient, go ahead, come into abduction, and if, as Molly is bringing her arm down, if it just falls, then that would be concerning for rotator cuff disease, so either a tear or tendonitis. Um, to follow that up, you might do some more provocative rotator cuff maneuvers. So um, we can try a lag test. So the external rotation lag test looks like this. If, if I think this is her injured shoulder, I would bring the shoulder into external rotation and just ask her to hold it there when I let go. Um, and so she's able to maintain that, which means that her shoulder rotator cuff is intact. 
but in some patients they'll actually lag back and not be able to hold that position or they might fall, their, their arm might fall down and that would give you an indication that that rotator cuff tendon is torn. Um, the opposite of that is the internal rotation lag test. And so I guess, why don't you stand and we can do this one standing. And so in this case, I would bring the affected arm behind the back and um, help the patient lift the hand off the low back. And then I'm gonna ask her to try to maintain that position. And you can see that she can. Now, if she kind of fell back or if she straightened her elbow, those would be indications that there could be a full thickness rotator cuff tear. So that's the external rotation lag test and the internal rotation lag test, which are both helpful in identifying full thickness rotator cuff tears. And then the third strength maneuver to think about um, is the empty can test. It's also known as Job's test. And in the empty can test, you hold your arms up. And so with empty can test, her thumbs are pointing down, she's gonna push up towards the ceiling. And again, I'm looking for strength and any pain. So if she were to drop her arm, we'd be concerned that there was a tendon tear. Um, although people can drop their arm because of pain as well. So I think it doesn't completely um, correlate to tear. It could be any kind of rotator cuff disease. Um, if she just has pain but full strength, then you'd be thinking tendonitis. Um, so that kind of gets you through the main red flags of the shoulder exam. You've figured out who has frozen shoulder, who has arthritis based on range of motion, and then you figured out who has a full thickness rotator cuff tear. Um, and then you can move on to kind of more advanced stuff um, if, if you feel like it. Um, so to look for shoulder impingement, which means bursitis or inflammation around the rotator cuff, uh, you could do the Hawkins test, which looks like this. So the shoulder is abducted to 90, brought across the body, and then internally rotated and look for pain. Any pain with that? No. And that would usually be the... the yeah. It would, uh, it would be lateral. Okay. Yeah. And then the other one is nears. And so nears, you actually want to put the thumb down so you, the arm is pronated, and then passively um, forward flex the arm. And again, we're looking for pain... Um, here and either of the Hawkins or the Nears would be painful if there's impingement syndrome. All right, and then Molly, I'll have you bring your hand just across your body, uh, a little bit less like here, and then I want you to just push up gently and then turn your thumb up and push up. Okay, good. Um, Good. I think that covers it. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think that that shows you can get a lot of information in a really it short period of time. It doesn't take long. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Sender. Thanks, Molly.